The United States has the highest incarceration rate in the world, and the state of Oklahoma has the highest incarceration of any state in the United States. Yeah. There's a new program out there that aims to help that population by teaching them how to code. Priscilla Chan is the wife of Facebook founder and CEO Mark Zuckerberg and the founder of the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. Her group is specifically aiming to help female inmates. In an exclusive interview for CBS This Morning, Dr. Chan takes CBS This Morning co-host Nora O'Donnell inside a medium security prison in McLeod, Oklahoma. When you think about rehabilitation or teaching prisoners, I think coding is really the last thing in a lot of people's minds. Why coding? I was just talking to a woman in the classroom and she's been incarcerated for 17 years and she is ready to return to her community and wants to contribute and she knows that the industry and the world has moved forward and we need to be giving people who are incarcerated the cutting edge skills. I was computer illiterate completely. Yeah. Priscilla Chan is helping to bring those cutting edge skills to 18 women at Mabel Bassett Correctional Center. It's the largest female prison in Oklahoma with over 1,200 inmates, 85 percent of whom are mothers. Use HTML. Through the Last Mile program, these women will learn computer coding languages like HTML, dot HTML. and JavaScript. Text edit, preferences. preferences. How do you teach coding when there's no internet connection at these prisons. It's phenomenal what they're able to achieve, but I think it just speaks to how dedicated they are to actually learning the skills. Do you really think that tech companies will want to hire felons? I think they want to hire people who are motivated and have the right skills, and so yes, mm -hmm. I do. She realized technology could help unlock opportunities for others when she and her husband, Mark Zuckerberg, visited the Last Miles coding program at San Quentin Prison in 2015. Seventy percent of individuals who are incarcerated will come back. But if you give vocational training, it goes down to 30 percent. In the Last Mile program, it is zero percent. Inside the Oklahoma prison, we met Taquiana Culver, who dropped out of school at age 13, had her first child at 15, and was in prison by the age of 34. In the dozen years she has spent behind bars, she's gotten her GED and is now a college senior majoring in business. She says she has a 3.9 GPA. How much longer will you be here? Two and a half more years. So you're almost there. I'm almost there. Are you scared when you think about what you're going to do when you get out of here? I am. I am. Um, not so terrified that it, um, I can't think clearly. I always keep in the forefront not wanting to make the same mistake that brought me here. So, Or the mistakes that got you here. Yeah. What happened? Literally, wrong place, wrong time, wrong people. I um, was separated from a husband was going through some things and I got involved with another guy that was not the right type of guy and drugs, drinking, mm -hmm. and I was at a place where I shouldn't have been with him and someone ended up dying and I mean, thank God it wasn't by my hands but I was still there. And um, you were convicted of I second degree murder? I was convicted of second degree murder. What do you want people to know about that? I want people to know that it's time to stop defining each individual with the mistakes that they make because if you are taught better, you do better, and a mistake does not make you a monster. We are worth redemption, and we can be redeemed. We can redeem ourselves. If Taquiana graduates, she will join the nearly 500 inmates across four states who have completed the year-long course to become software engineers. There are so many jobs that need to be filled today, and so I think there's an incredible appetite for people with the right training to do the right job. One in two individuals have a family member or someone in their lives that is involved in our prison system. What would you say to those who say that someone who's been convicted of second degree murder does not deserve a second chance? Yeah. She deserves to be in prison. I think we have to be aware that all of those women in the classroom and everyone who leaves um, prison has served their time. Each one of those women is a mother, is a family member, and as Brian Stevenson says, more than the worst thing that they've ever done. So for more on this interview, CBS This Morning co-host Nora O'Donnell joins us now. Hey, so hey, this morning. is really fascinating. I think on the surface when you hear prison inmates, female prison inmates, and coding, mm -hmm. uh, minorities. I mean, these are when you look at Silicon Valley, these are the people who aren't there, right? right. Um, but 
watching your story, you see how it works. And I'm wondering how did these have these inmates embrace this program? And the ripple effect beyond just learning that skill, were there other changes that occurred with them? Absolutely. This is a first of its kind program to teach inmates coding. It started when the Zuckerberg saw a program at San Quentin in California in 2015. It's now expanded to a number of states. They are putting this money behind this program and the idea that recidivism is one of the biggest problems, that you get out and 75, 80 percent end up back in prison. So mm -hmm. one, let's teach them a skill that they can use. One, that's a good paying skill. So let's teach them. Most of them are computer I illiterate and that's part of this criminal justice reform, which is a larger part of the, Chuck, the Chan Zuckerberg initiative, which is, by the way, <laughs> is one of the largest charitable organizations in the world, only perhaps a little bit larger than, than um, Melinda and Bill Gates' organization. So I think this is a way to help people who need help. They've largely been, the taxpayer dollars are being spent just to house them and feed them. There's not a lot being spent on the reform initiative, and so that's what this is aimed at. You know, it was so interesting listening to your interview with her over the last couple of days that aired on CBS this morning, um, because we were saying earlier how just normal she seems and yet she's had a lot of, she's seen a lot of things and she's experienced a lot of things that have led her to take this initiative on. I want to play a little bit of your interview with her when she talks about the experiences that she had as a doctor and why that transformed her. When I was taking care of kids in San Francisco Safety Net Hospital, I realized that almost every single one of my patients had a parent or family member that was incarcerated. And I felt so deeply then that the potential of those children, who a lot of them were not unlike me growing up, didn't have the same opportunities because of the way their lives were impacted by our country's incarceration system. I'm the child of Chinese Vietnamese refugees who, in my opinion, got really lucky. And a lot of people helped me in a way that allowed me to reach my dreams and become a physician. What I love about that response to your question is that it's so rare to hear people saying, look, I'm not here because I'm better, smarter, or I pulled myself up by my bootstraps and nobody helped me to get here. They recognize that there were a whole host of things and, and, and infrastructure that got them there and they want to give back. Right. She is, of course, the, the granddaughter of um, Vietnamese Chinese boat immigrants who, who left to come to this country. You know, they didn't have a lot. They've, they settled in a Boston suburb. She won a full scholarship to Harvard and almost left because she felt like such an outsider when she was at Harvard. And I think what I learned a lot about is we are the product of our circumstances in many ways. Just like Tuck Culver, the inmate that was in there, who dropped out of school when she was 13 and didn't have a lot going for her and got mixed up with a bad guy. In Priscilla Chan's experience, she knows a lot about coming from a struggling family, the immigrant experience, taking care of people who are in the hospital system whose parents have been part of a correctional facility. She has that empathy from experience. Mm -hmm. And I think that gives her a lot of credibility when she lends her support to these types of programs. This is a massive endeavor, endeavor though. Like this program is just one component of a massive endeavor. And when I thought about incarceration, I thought this is like strikes right down to the heart and soul of this country, yeah. the, the sort of the core inequality and that ripples out in so many other ways. Well, here's what I learned. And we know that criminal justice reform has been one of the few bipartisan initiatives that has passed during the Trump administration, even backed by the Koch brothers, which are considered one of the leading donators to conservative causes in this country. The reason the reason is because when you look closely at this, you realize we have too many people locked up and we're wasting money doing that. Mm. In the state of Oklahoma, the prison capital of the world. Uh, that was the shocking. prison yeah. capital yeah, of the world. That. They are spending about $520 million a year on that. If they said they just kept it at like what the rest of the rate, they could save their state about $125 million. That is money that is not going into the educational system. There are women in there like Tuck Culver who have gotten her GAD, who have who have are in a business program, a graduate business program, learning how to code. Do we need to be housing them for multiple years? That's a question about the strict sentencing laws. And so it's good that we're shining a line on this. I was fascinated to meet Priscilla Chan. I also wanted to for the first time and go inside a prison, yeah. which everything I've done, you know, everywhere yeah. I've been around the world yeah, no, and not. covered presidents. I saw on your Instagram you were yeah. sort of teasing it a little bit and you were saying that this was an eye-opener for you. So yes. can, let me ask you personally then, you know, what sort of struck you about that experience and the women that you met? 
Um, you know, it was sad. Mm -hmm. You know, you think about, I mean, I can't imagine spending a dozen years of my life where you can't leave. Mm -hmm. um, the women's room is probably not much bigger than this table with two beds this close together. If you've been behaving, you can have a TV in your small little room with an antenna. They can only watch the broadcast networks. Um, so they've, some of them have watched CBS this morning. But it seemed a lot of people knitting, a lot of people reading. You know, it was, there was one woman there who was on death row, but I got a sense that there was a lot of, and even from the prison officials said, we're keeping people in prison too long. Wow. They are educating themselves. It's time to get them out into the real world and save this state money. Yeah. Such an interesting interview. I also did like when you asked her when she met Mark Zuckerberg, and I guess you said, you know, she was like, oh, yeah, well, I wasn't even sure I was going to stay at Harvard. And you're like, but you're dating Mark Zuckerberg. Uh -huh. And we were like, well, I guess she probably didn't know he was going to become the world's <laughs> richest man. Right. And she did tell us, I said, what do your parents think about the fact that, you know, here you were, you know, a, a child of immigrants, and now you're a billionaire philanthropist. She said, all my mother cares about is if I'm still practicing medicine. Are you was, still a doctor? We joked about yeah, that. Being first generation Americans, yeah. I was yeah. like, that is something my mother would say. Yeah. She's like, yeah. I know you're on TV, but did you ever get your college degree? Exactly. <laughs> and are you going to get a ma my mom? Are you going to get a master's degree? Make sure you get your graduate degree. The fact that she got teary eyed too, I think Rizzy yes. sort of touched us because I think when you're the child of an immigrant, you realize the sacrifices that your parents, mm -hmm. you know, um, took on to get yes. you here, and you're like, man, I can't waste that. Yes. You know? Right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. So good to see you. Good Appreciate you. it.